Dear listeners, welcome to this latest episode of the podcast, The Way Out is In. I'm Joe Confino, working at the intersection of personal transformation and systems evolution. And I am Brother Fab Hu, a Zen Buddhist monk, a student of Zen Master Thich Nhat Hanh in the Plum Village tradition in France. And today, brother, it's um, two weeks since the passing of Thich Nhat Hanh. And um, so we are sitting in Thai's hut, the sitting still hut in Upper Hamlet, France. And this is a chance to really reflect on these last two weeks. And, and it's very interesting because it's a uh, I'm sitting here and I feel my voice very different from normal. I am Joe Confino. And I am Brother Fab Hu. And Brother, welcome. Um, as I said, it's uh, two weeks since Thai passed, and, um, and this is an opportunity to, as I said, reflect and to offer our listeners a, a, an opportunity to have a sort of a deep insight into these last two weeks, how you've been, how the community is, um, the whole few extraordinary global phenomenon of Thai's passing and the funeral. But it seems most important to start off with, brother, just, just to remind our listeners of your relationship to Thai. Hello, everyone. I ordained when I was 14 years old, but I started my monastic training when I was 13. So my relationship, uh, my student and teacher relationship with Thai started in 2001. And I have been his personal attendant for over 15 years. And so I had the privilege and the fortune of being just so close to him in everyday life, being able to learn from him through the Dharma, his teaching, but then had the chance to learn from his body action, mindfulness in daily life. Um, and that for me, I still carry all of that teaching. Like it is imp implanted <laughs> into like every cell of my body. And so, yeah, this this episode might become a little bit emotional. So, <laughs> um, because in the last two weeks, it has been very special, very um, like a solemn moment every day. Because just feeling Thai in the Sangha right now, as he is free as a cloud, but how much we are processing and practicing with um, the continuation of Thai. Because we can look at this present moment in two aspects. It's the ultimate dimension, which Thai teaches us to see Thai has not gone. Thai is still continuing through each and every one of us, through our mindful breathing, our mindful walking, our practice as a community, because that's what he has transmitted to us. As long as we carry his message in our life, Thai will never die. And I've touched that. And, and I, that is the truth. That is not wishful thinking. But on another level, let's say the historical dimension, we are human beings. And each and every one of us have different relationships towards Thai. Um, Thai is Zen Master Thich Nhat Hanh. It means teacher. So whenever you hear us say Thai, that's who we are referring to. Um, we all have different levels of connection to Thai. Some of us had the chance to be with him for over 60 years, such as Sister Chang Kam. Some of us 
have been with him for 20 years, um, some of us over 15 years, some of us have never met him in person, but have been with his teaching through his books, through his messages, his videos on YouTube or his interviews. And they have carried his teaching in his life. So for me, that is also considering meeting Tai. And so when we hear someone so magnificent as Tai, because he has impacted millions of people, someone's passing like that, you just, you just have to feel sad, you know, and it is okay to feel sad. It is okay to grieve because that is our practice. Breathing in, I'm aware of my feelings. Breathing out, I embrace my feelings. And that is our practice. So we have to allow ourselves to be sad. We have to allow ourselves to feel the grief because in grief, it also expresses what that person meant to us. And for me, a lot of the feelings that have been coming up for myself is, first of all, just gratitude. I just feel, wow, I was able to be born in an era that Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh was alive and teaching. And then the, gra- the gratefulness of having the right conditions to bringing myself to Plum Village, and I owe that to my father. And then the right merits that have come together to tell me to become a monk, because those were the conditions that gave me this opportunity to enter into this life with such a person. And the second feeling that I've been... um, holding is yeah the sadness because it does feel somehow empty and it's very strange because I can't really put my finger on it sometimes there are days I just wake up and I just feel I just feel empty and this is not emptiness of the Dhamma (laughs) (laughs) this is just emptiness of the person who changed my life is now embraced by Mother Earth. And he is not in the physical form anymore. And what what has been so so interesting with with Tai is I I can say that Tai has been training his monastic and lay students for over 40 years to already practice no birth and no death, seeing his continuation. But because our our mind is is so basic sometimes. We're like, yeah, yeah, that's later. That's the future. And we are still grasping the here and now, which was maybe a few years ago. And Tai was still healthy. He was still teaching. And we don't bring in impermanence yet, right? So suddenly now with, with the reality that Tai is not here in a physical form, just knowing that when he was here, I felt secure. I felt safe. I felt I'm walking the path that my teacher led me. And somehow I felt that. I felt so supported just knowing that Tai is breathing the same air as I am in this beautiful planet. It just gave me this feeling of um, stability and when the moment came, at, at first receiving the news, um, it was surreal. But it was very interesting. And I, I like to share about it. <laughs> I was in a Zoom call. <laughs> we were in a Zoom International Plum Village um, TNH Foundation meeting. And in 2018, when Tai returned back to Vietnam, one of our most senior monastic brother asked Tai, Tai, would you like to go back to Vietnam so you can also live the last days in Vietnam and one day return back to the earth in Vietnam? And Tai nodded. So that moment when Tai gave us that confirmation, we already started to plan for Tai's 
passing for Thai's continuation. And, and we have a procedure of how things will go down, and, I, and I'll share about that later. But through the last um, four years, I've had the cell phone with me always on, like on, on vibration, or I always keep the screen so that I can see it, right? Just in case there is information about Thai. So we were having this meeting and um, the phone calls rings from one of Thai's head attendant. And normally I would text back and I said, oh, I'm in a meeting. Can you call me back in 30 minutes or um, tell me when to call you back? Um, if Can it be postponed? But the phone kept ringing and I just had a moment of like, this can be really serious. So I, <laughs> I muted my mic. I turned off my camera on Zoom and I called back um, the sister and I said, Suji, Suji means elder sister. Suji, I'm here. What is it? And she asked me, what is the Sangha doing? And I said, the Sangha is about to eat dinner. And she said, Tai's heart is slowing down. And we are all sending Tai energy. Can the community in Plum Village also all Think of Thai and send energy to Thai in this moment. When I received that, I still took it as Thai is having a difficult moment and he needs support. I didn't think that Thai is passing. And the reason why is because I have been with Thai since his stroke. I was in the hospital in 2014 when Tai had the stroke and I was holding Tai as the stroke has happened. And he was supposed not to make that. The doctors told us that he was supposed to pass away in a few hours. And this is in November, 2014. And Tai overcame that. Uh, you know, like talking about his journey can be a whole series and we've talked about doing mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um, and and we will, we'll, we will get into it uh, at one point. But just to share that like, Tai has been through so many difficulties regarding the physical illness and the, the physical impermanence. Um, so I just took, I just took that phone call as in Tai is going through a difficult moment and the Sangha is sending energy to Thai. And there's something when collectively everyone thinks of you and sends their, their love. Because humans, we also live off energy. And I know that it has a big impact on Thai. So at that moment, you know, I had to continue the Zoom call, but everything changed for me at that moment. And I I didn't want to create any panic also in the Sangha because that is also not healthy. So after after the, the Zoom call finished, um, luckily it ended within the next 20 minutes, Sister True Dedication receives a text from our dear elder sister attendant saying that this is the moment Tai is becoming a cloud. But it hasn't yet pronounced that Tai has passed away. So she texts me right away and I jump on the phone call with her and I said, let us wait. We, we cannot announce anything yet, um, but let us send energy to our, our teacher and the community that is around Tai. So in the next 10 minutes, it was very intense for us and every minute felt so long. Because we have a procedure that we have put together since 2018 of what we need to do as a community um, when the moment comes when Tai passes away, when Tai continues. And what is most important is the information has to come from Plum Village. That is the most accurate information. And Sister um, Concentration, Sister Den Nim, gives us a voice message that says that Tai has passed. And then Sister True Dedication takes care of announcing to the world, the press side. And Joe, you were part of this yes. discussion in 2018. Yes. And Tai Fop Kam and myself 
are supposed to take of the monastic um, network of all of Plum Village monasteries. And Thay Ang was uh, sorry, Thay Phap Kham was to take care of Asia, and I was to take care of Europe and then um, North America and any other monasteries. So this network was put into place, and we. We know that in 2014 there was already a misinformation that Thai has already passed, and and that information a little bit was wildfire, and we had to do <laughs> some um, some damage control and, and to just confirm with everyone that no Thai is still alive. Please breathe together and generate this mindfulness to to support Thai in these critical moments. So now, fast forward 2022, we've learned so much through the years, and we wanted to make sure that when that moment come, it will become a moment of togetherness. That's what we felt, and that's what we wanted to to generate together globally, because we know that this moment will not be a moment just for the monastic only, because Thai's impact is beyond. Just the monasteries, so we had to be so sure with every information that we're receiving. So I, you know, in this this moment, we were trying to get information, and at the same time, breathing with our own mind of trying to visualize what is happening because we're not there, and. You know, to be honest, I didn't feel anything at that moment because I went into a different mode, which is like, what do we need to do? It's like fight mode, you can say. So, like, I was very, very alert, and I was being so present for the monastics who were in Vietnam with Thai and trying to get the right information. And at the same time, because I've been with Thai um, through his hospital journey. How emotional it is when there is any um, physical difficulty that Thai has to go through because your your teacher is right in front of you. So I was trying to understand my dear sisters and brothers attendant what they're feeling right now and not to pressure anything. So <laughs> through text, I was you know compassionately saying, "Is there any update? Can you let us know? Because we are here for you." And there are these pauses of, I, I know it was only like two minutes or something, but it felt so long, and and it it was still like we're still sending energy, and that for me it meant Tai hasn't passed yet, and me and Sister True Dedication were on the phone trying to breathe together, and we're like, let's try to call, let's try to get the accurate information, and when we had the phone call. We can hear the brothers and sisters chanting, "Namo b u d h a k w a n g t e Am, Namo b u d h a k w a n g t e Am." That is Namo Avalokiteshvara, is a bodhisattva of great compassion, and that's all we're hearing. And our sisters couldn't, didn't have the energy at that moment to, to call to talk to us. And she's like, she just put it on on video for us to witness, and just I, I know that was an invitation for us to also be there with Thai and with the monastic brothers and sisters there. But nevertheless, we still needed information because we know what we needed to do. And so when that moment came, um, Sister d e n i m has shared that Thai has become a cloud. That moment when we received that voice memo, I w- I went right into action. Um, sister h i n g i m s like, I'm in Lower Hamlet. I'm gonna tell all the sisters. I'm in Upper Hamlet. I need to tell all the brothers and all the lay friends. And I have to tell New Hamlet because um, none of the New Hamlet sisters was on the phone, and that's my part of my responsibility. And. I make this phone call as I was running, trying to gather all the brothers and sis, uh, all the brothers and lay friends. Like I need everyone in the meditation hall in 20 minutes because that is the next step that we have to do. Um, but the poor sister who got my phone call in New Hamlet as I was <laughs> like 
like breathing because I was running. And she's like, um, brother, what's, 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 what's going on? Why are you breathing like that? And I was like, is there any elder, el- elder sister there? And, and she's like, oh, I can look for I'm like, no, forget it. Please just tell the el- elder sister that our teacher has passed away. And you just hear on the on the other line, <gasps> are you serious? And I'm like, sister, this is not a drill. This just happened. It is the moment for us to come together. So what we have set up is when the news comes that Tai has passed away, all monasteries of the Plum Village tradition will invite the great temple bell. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is. And the brother or sister inviting it will wear the his or her sangati and will just be inviting it for, in principle, 30 minutes. But our brother invited for the, the whole hour, one of our brothers. And the sangha was to come together in each individual hamlet. And we would make the announcement that our teacher has passed. And all of us would sit together and breathe. And then we would do a very short ceremony to, to recollect. Because in this moment, ceremony holds this energy of uniting the sangha. It's very important. And we chant the Heart Sutra, which teaches us about impermanence. This body is not me. I'm not caught in this body. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no form. We are free from all this. So it is the right sutra we chant. And then we would offer incense. And then we would um, recite this poem that Tai has beautifully put together. Um, I am not this body. Um, I am not caught in this body, etc. I, 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 I don't want to butcher it because I don't memorize it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful meditation and we have to practice right away. So what was really interesting for myself in that moment was um, I thought I was fine because in 2016, Tai has already left Plum Village and he traveled to Thailand to our Asian center. And... When Tai left Plum Village, I really felt like Tai may not come back to Plum Village. I I just had this intuition because that morning, Brother Fab Yung and myself, it was during the rains retreat, um, as the community was going to take Tai to the airport um, in Bergerac. But myself and Brother Fab Yung, we had some other duty that we couldn't see Tai at the airport. So early morning, we went and we um, we said goodbye to Tai at the hermitage before he went to the airport. And both of us knelt, um, we knelt on our knees, join our palms and wished Tai a safe journey and a beautiful time with our younger brothers and sisters in Thailand and Asia. And Tai Fop Yung shared to Tai, you know, Tai, we, your students in Plum Village, we will carry on your legacy here. And Tai, with his left hand, joined his palm and he bowed to us. And he put his, um, his hand on both of our heads and touched our face. And then he said, and he did this motion as in like, now go. He, he put his his hand forward as in like, go, do what what I want you to do. Be my continuation. And I remember Brother Fabium and I, we, we had this moment, we looked at each other and we're just like, we have to continue Thai. There's no question. And I, I've, I only shared a, this um, to some inner circle of brothers and sisters, but... Um, when Tai left Plum Village in 2016, I had a feeling was that Tai wanted Plum Village friends because Plum Village friends is now the root community of the Plum Village tradition. The root temple in Hue is still our root temple because that is where Tai was ordained and where he was trained and our grandfather teacher was also from there and that is our lineage we have this beautiful stream of continuation but Tai also started a new tradition which is the Plum Village School and 
on multiple occasions, Tai has shared with me and with the community that Plum Village France and Upper Hamlet will become the root, the root monastery of this beautiful tradition to go for years to come. I, if I dare to say, hundreds of years to come. And in 2016, when Tai left, I had this feeling like Tai wanted us to learn to spread our own wings and not to always take refuge in Tai as, as students that won't step up. Because I remember this so vividly. Um, in 2016, we had all of these beautiful retreats, 21-day retreat, francophone retreat, summer retreat, uh, wake-up retreat. And Tai was witnessing us grow up because now Tai can't speak. So us young Dhamma teachers were learning to be Tai's continuation and how beautiful it is to be supported by Tai in this way. And we, now looking back, I, I would say we've grown so much. Um, but what was so funny was like, especially walking meditation, because now we were all alternating in being leaders in our community. Because Tai never said one person will become the leader of Plum Village. Tai said, every one of you will be my continuation. And the seniors know what they have to do. Um, the young ones know how they can continue Tai. The lay friends know how they can support and also how they can be Tai's continuation in their own practice. Every time we gather for walking meditation, and when Tai comes, we all take a step back. And we let Tai lead again. And we were still having this habit that Tai is still the leader. And Tai is, we will still take refuge in Tai. And I think we should. We have that privilege. But I think Tai wanted us to, Plum Village, one of the root temples, to stand on our own two feet now. And so since 2016, when Tai left, I have already been meditating and practicing with this um, insight that we are not caught in Thai's physical form. And we have been doing so well. <laughs> you know, we have grown so much. We have been able to continue to build our Sangha. We've been able to continue to have ordination year after year. Young brothers and sisters were coming um, to to aspire to join the path. And that tells us that we're still, Tai's legacy is still continuing through us. So I was naive in a way that thinking that I'm ready because I have already witnessed, quote unquote, Tai's continuation body in the Sangha. And when I finally sat down, I put on my Sangati for, um, for, for all of us to gather. I just broke down and I just cried and I just sobbed and, um, you know, tears just kept coming. And are still flowing, brother. Let us, uh, listeners, breathe for a moment while uh, Papu um, is in his feelings. It's just a... Uh, Breathe for a moment. And brother Minhi comes up to me, um, the, the eldest brother in Upper Hamlet at this moment, and he embraces me and I just cry. I just cried on his shoulder. And I just accepted, wow. Humanity just just said goodbye to one of the greatest teachers of our lifetime, and uh, and just so much gratitude came up because I was sitting at the bell, normally where Tai sits, and we brought the picture that we chose for the funeral, and that picture was chosen because it symbolizes. Um, the transmission. Mm. If I think everyone have seen the photo of Tai in his Sangari and holding a Dharma lamp and with a flame. And 
that was taken during one of um, a lamp transmission. And every time Thay transmit that lamp to a monastic or a lay um, to become a Dharma teacher, he always has this saying when he says, this flame is from generations to generation. And now I am passing this flame to all of you. And he said, please protect it. Please let it shine and make sure it continues in the present moment and into the future. And I was just um, remembering Thay's love and trust to all of us um, throughout his time with us. And he was um, so, so unselfish. As, um, as famous as Thay became and he never, he never asked to be in the limelight or he never, he never strived for that. Um, but Thay's, um, the world needed to hear about mindfulness, compassion, and love. And Thay was continuing to give that. But on a personal side, he never left us. He never forgot about us. He would spend time to eat with us, to take us on walks. Um, he would drink tea. Um, he would invite us to watch the flower blooms. We have daffodil hills and he would make it a festival. He's like, this is daffodil festival. And everyone put your schedule aside and we're going to enjoy the daffodil. You know, like just these little moments is are moments of um, love and 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 unselfishness, right? Because Tai can just say, "I'm busy," and we all respect that. We know how much Tai is offering and how much he needs time and space to to do what he needs to do. Um, and and one of the one of the um, the feelings that came up to me was also Tai's life is his message. You know, he said this so many times. And and in this moment when when I'm sitting there and we're about to do this first ceremony for Tai, and I just I just realized now Tai has to be alive in each and every one of us. Um and as we were sitting in silent, you know, this words came up is I vow. I vow to keep this fire alive. Um, and that was um, the moment when, when we finished our first ceremony and we gathered. We then allocated everyone what to do because we, we had a whole lot of things we needed to do. And what was the next step was the international level is, is making sure that the world gets to to grieve together, to breathe together, and to offer tribute to Thai together. Um, and we, 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 went, we went into super active monastic mode, <laughs> very, very mindful, but not slow. We were super fast and we, we created headquarters of information and that team was assembled. We all, the first day we all gathered in Lower Hamlet and we needed to make sure that all the news outlet that uh, had to had the right information, and then we were some of us were tasked to 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 write to all of our um, friends who have been supporting Thai and Plum Village for over forty years, and making sure that they they get this information from us. And and I was contacting all of the monasteries and even some monasteries, even receiving the official information, didn't believe it yet. And they wrote to me privately and they said, Brother Fapu, is this true? And I, and I, I just replied, yes. <laughs> That's it. I couldn't write more. I just said, yes. And I said, and I pressed send. And it, we were also in contact with Vietnam in this moment. We were um, making sure how we are going to go forward with the ceremonies because we have agreed that the first ceremony of um, 
putting Ty's body into the casket would be an international event, a live stream from Vietnam. And we would um, organize to commentate on how the ceremony is happening and what is happening because everything would be in Vietnamese. And there is so much meaning to a ceremony that if you have no idea what is happening, you're just going to miss miss out. Um, and then making sure what we're going to do for uh, this eight days of ceremony. So we prepared in 2018. And then in 2020, we re-prepared because it became COVID time, um, what to do in a situation of COVID, of the pandemic. So we shortened it to five days. But then in Vietnam, uh, with the support of the authorities, they allowed us um, to have bigger gatherings. So we pushed it to eight days, eight days of, we called it a retreat. Uh, a retreat of silence and a retreat of remembering Thai and uh, continuing Thai. And the last day, which was the cremation, was also to be agreed to to be an international event that all of the monasteries, no matter what time of the day it is, we're going to be present. And we are going to, as one sangha, monastic and lay fourfold, we're going to be there together. It doesn't matter what time of the day it was. And this was agreed in 2018 and confirmed again in 2020. Um, and Thai, Thai's transitioning happened at midnight on the 22nd in in Vietnam. So this was still the 21st in France. Um, we didn't end our first moment of working um, until 5 a.m. And the next ceremony was at 9.30. So um, Martin, our dear uh, brother who takes care of our Plum Village website, drove me back to Upper Hamlet. And, say, and he said, try to get some rest. And I said, yeah, let's just close our eyes. And I had to, I had to um, lead the first ceremony because it happened during the night in Vietnam. Vietnam needed more time to prepare. So it gave us one extra day of buffer to to have a ceremony held in Plum Village as the main ceremony for the world to breathe together, chant together, and remember Thai together. And in Vietnam, it gave the monastic, his students, more time to just be with Thai. And um, it was very beautiful that we were able to keep Thai's body in Thai's deep listening hut at the root temple and brothers and sisters took time to sit beside his um, bed in different groups and had time to prostrate. And this prostration is not devotion. This prostration is our deepest respect to someone who has, um, who has brought us into spiritual life, you know. Brother, let's take a moment to, um, again, dear listeners, let's give Brother Fapu a moment. We can all breathe together and support him at this moment. You know, for many of us, um, we grew up in a Buddhist family, but... um, we didn't know the beautiful culture and the depths of Buddhism. And we can say we've been waiting for a master to open our eyes um, to the spiritual dimension. And for, for us, we were so lucky that we found Thai. So, you know, the tears and the prostration are just gratefulness and honoring and uh, respect.
so the first ceremony, I was naive again because I told I told my crew in the in the headquarter office, I told them, oh, I already cried, so I'm good. <laughs> And and I knew tomorrow was going to be live, live broadcast. And honestly, we didn't know how many people would be joining us. We we had no idea of the phenomenal f- um, effect and interbeing of the eight day that it had. Um, that that connection. We we really, I mean, at least for me, I I didn't know the scale. And I I was just joking to you know Sister True Dedication, Sister Hing. I'm like sister. I'm good. I already cried. Tomorrow I'll be I'll be perfectly fine to lead the ceremony. And at um, seven o'clock, I I was rehearsing um, in my room, just reading the text what I need to read. And I I, I read it three times, and I felt really confident. Um, but when the ceremony came and this collective energy of the sangha came together something happened which was this unity and this beautiful manifestation of Thai just was here. One brother, one cushion away from me right after incense offering, he just started to to cry. He just started to um, let his, his tears and his emotion be embraced by the Sangha. And I can hear it. And I knew, oh no, this is going to be a domino effect. And I right away, I invited, I woke up the sound of the bell and I started chanting because I didn't want to also be under that spell. <laughs> and and I chanted quite well in the first Namo Tasya Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. And then the Dhamma is deep and lovely, the opening verse. And then I led the community into chanting the Heart Sutra. But when it came to the line that this body is empty and we are free from all forms, I couldn't chant. My my body was just telling me, you need to cry. And what better way to, to be sad than in the Sangha's embrace? And and I, at that moment, you know, sometimes Tai would tell us in... Before chanting, Tai says, you can say, Dear Sangha, this is my sorrow. This is my suffering. I take refuge in you. And you let the Sangha carry, carry you. And in that moment, and I said, Dear brothers, dear sisters, dear friends, I'm so sad. And I just cried and I cried. And <laughs> from time to time, whenever I can chant a few, a few words, I would join in and then when the tears and the feelings would come up, I embrace it again. I recognize it. And the text that we read was um, to announce why we are here. And a memorial service is is very common in temples and monasteries. And we've done many um, in Plum Village, we have three main ones that we do together as three hamlets. One is for Zen Master Tang Hoi, the first Zen Master of Vietnam. The second is our patriarch, the founder of the Root Temple, the Hu Temple, um, Zen Master Nhuc Dinh. And the third is um, our grandfather teacher, Thai's teacher, Zen Master Tan Kui. So these are the three memorial services that we do Um, every year as three monasteries in Plum Village, we would come together and we would honor our, our venerable, our, our um, spiritual teachers who has already passed. And Tai has written a very beautiful introduction. And now I had to read it for Tai. And I just got so emotional because we said, this is our spiritual ancestor now. And I had to announce Tai's name. And it's it's fine when you announce someone who has passed away f- f- from years ago and no pers- no deep connection. But when it's Tai, it's very different. Because for me, you know, like Tai is more than a Zen master. <laughs> 
He is also a spiritual father for us. Take care for our well-being, not on just a spiritual level, but on the level of like, do we have enough food? Um, do we have enough warm clothes? Do we have enough rooms? And Tai would, in tours, would like sell his calligraphies for donations. Let's take a moment, dear listeners, to uh, breathe with Brother Fapu and to um, sense his pain, but also his, below that, his deep love for his spiritual teacher. Brother, um, Tai for you was not just your teacher, he was like your father. He took you under his wing at a young age and he invested so much in you. And um, I think once he said to you that um, something to the effect of, um, Brother Vepu, we've been together many lifetimes. So I think for you maybe there's there's also this deep karmic connection that is deeper maybe than even you know of this uh, of traveling together in maybe different forms in different relationships and so I can imagine that this this separation at this moment um, is very very deeply felt mm-hmm. thank, thank you Joe you know, Tai would go on tours and uh, sell his calligraphies as a way for to get funds for us to build a monastic residence because his monastic students were growing so much. And then um, Tai Plum Village started as a small farm. And through the years, Thousands of people started to know more about Plum Village and Thai's teaching, and they wanted to learn directly from Thai, so they would come. And we had moments when we had to build bigger meditation halls, and everything, you know, in the world, we, we need some expenses. So, like, these, these little steps, Thai took care of us. And this extraordinary sense of him having this global influence, seeing things at a global level, having this deep understanding of interbeing at the grandest level possible (laughs) and then at the most intimate level, that there was no difference between them. There was no difference. And it shows something of his extraordinary nature that so many people who reach, in quotes, unquote, a, a high level in society, lose the connection to the earth and he was always he was like up in the stars and at the same time his feet were firmly on the ground and he was able to see all and to see one exactly and uh, i i came in as a teenager so <laughs> i'll never forget this as we we're sitting in tai's hut you know i'm um, sitting still hot um I've never, sh- <laughs> I've never shared this publicly, um, and here, here it is in the podcast, but there was a day when um, one of Tai's attendants um, called me and said, Tai wants to see you. And I come into the hut a little bit nervous because <laughs> normally when Tai wants to see you, it's either like you are not practicing properly and he wants to give you guidance, and that means like you've done something wrong, <laughs> or... Or he has some projects for you that he, he wants you to be a part of, which is a great, great honor. Um, but when you don't know, there's just a little bit of fear, right? And whenever Tai meets anyone in his hut, he always invites some tea. And I'm having tea with Tai, 14 years old. And Tai starts to tell me, it's like gong. Gong means um, student, son, daughter. Gong emphasizes son, daughter, nephew, nieces, whatever. He's like, God, you're going to be growing up and your body's going to be changing. So if you have any questions about uh, 
about puberty, about your development as a human. Don't be afraid to ask Thai, and don't be afraid to ask your elder brothers and my elder brothers <laughs> for guidance. Like this is who Thai is. He he deeply. He deeply cares for us, and uh, like you said, he didn't see himself separate from us, and I think that was what what um, drew us so close to him. And uh, at the same time, Tai is really funny, and he loves life. You know, in this hut, like we've had moments when we would Tai would sing songs, um, Tai would tell us stories. Um, We would all laugh. Tai would hear our stories, so invested, and he would he would laugh about our our um, shortcomings, and and sometimes we would share with something something that we're not so proud of. But he would say, "But thanks to that, now you're here." You know, he always helps us see the beauty of suffering, the beauty of shortcoming, and the beauty of life. Um, And there's another moment uh, as I was attending Tai. You know, normally we always prepare food for him, and um, I'm not a good cook, but we have many good sisters that are his cooks. And in big retreats, you know, Tai has a lot of a lot of guests, and one of my training is to make sure that his time with guests are not too long. If he gets too tired, I know have I I would have to skillfully close the meeting so that Tai can rest. And there was a day in one of our 21 day retreat. Tai had a lot of guests, and uh, and it way surpassed Tai's um, lunch time. And Tai's food was already brought into his dining hall where we're sitting, Joe. This table where where Tai ate. And normally, I would go to the dining hall to get my own food, and I get to eat with Tai. And that day, Tai said, "Gong, don't you share with Tai." You eat with Thai, and it was so <laughs> it's so intimate because I got to serve the old, my the same rice with Thai, eat the same tofu, the same soup, the same vegetable. But like you said, it, no matter how um, accomplished Thai can be, that never he is never a victim of that, and that's what I really aspire to. To cultivate in myself, you know, and and you know, in 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 the ceremonies, um, we had chance to share about all of this, like what what it meant for us, who Tai was, how he touched our heart, and how we want to continue him. And the the ceremonies was a way to channel our grief together, because sadness is an energy, gratitude is an energy, grief is an energy. And and to do it as a, as a sangha body was the best way to do it. And as you say, brother, um, because I know some people felt on Ty's passing that that was it okay to be sad. Mm. And I think um, what well, you're giving them the answer without <laughs> having to say anything. Mm. That actually, the tears are bitter but also very sweet. Mm. Because if we don't go deep into our feelings, this podcast is the way out. Is it? <laughs> if we're not going into our feelings of sadness, into our feelings of grief, then all we're doing is blocking them. But the point is not to be stuck in them. That it is our tears are like flow. It's like a mm-hmm. it's like a a flow. Yeah, and that we need to let it flow. Yeah. And what was so unique uh, in Plum Village. And I think many of the friends can feel it. What as they joined us online was, even though there was um, great sadness and sorrow, but there was great lightness and togetherness. And um, we had moments of just drinking tea together, and we would laugh. You know, we would share something so beautiful about our path. You know. Um, We would share a meal, and we would. I I I started to realize I was looking at my brothers and sisters with newer eyes, 
just seeing tight in them. Um, and then I was walking much more mindfully. Every step I took, every time I um, opened the door, I would do it much more skillfully. And isn't it amazing that Tai is still teaching us in this moment? And that was what I was embracing is that Tai is still here through these through these actions and through my practice. So this was the first day, right? 22nd. And now comes the first ceremony in Vietnam, which is uh, putting Tai's body into the casket. And I just want to share, and I, I want to, I want to share my flowers to uh, the whole team on Vietnam and in Plum Village, because the amount of work that we put into preparing for it was incredible. And it was a moment of we are the river. There is no separation. Nobody is is thinking about themselves. Um, we we had to prepare all the texts. We had to try to understand everything that's going to happen so that Sister True Dedication can give a beautiful commentary about how it will be presented. And she did an absolutely amazing um, job, a task, you know, and I... To today, like every time I see her, I just bow so deep to Sister True Dedication because she was one of the um, the forces for the team, the energy for the team, and she was. Sometimes I call her boss. Sometimes I call her <laughs> call her my dear sister, or sometimes my younger sister if I just want to support her. Um, but she was such a rock for all of us th- during this moment too, and I was also very aware of how tough it was for her, but. When I saw, and he, uh, all of us, we saw the video and the, the live stream of it. When I saw Tai's body, um, impermanence. We are of the nature to grow old. We are of the nature to all get sick. We are of the nature to die. Everything that we hold deep and dear to us, one day we will let go of. And I was just reciting that in my, in each breath as I was watching Tai's body be carried by my wonderful brothers and, um, and sisters in Vietnam. And um, I, the first person that I thought of after um, that ceremony together with all of the Plum Village monasteries and lay friends around the world, the first person I thought of was Sister Chiang Kong, who was Tai's companion since Thai started engaged Buddhism as a lay as a lay young woman with this deep aspiration to walk the path of nonviolence. And so I called her. I was like, I, I need to get in touch with Sister Chiang Kong because as big of a moment that this is for the Sangha to remember Thai, I also think we have to think about Sister Chiang Kong. Um and I called her and we both started crying <laughs> through the video call. And Sister Chiang Kong was so sweet. She said that, um, thanks to you, it is the second time that Suko is able to cry. So she said the first was that morning and the second was with me. And we both just shared this moment of tears. And Suko is such a seasoned practitioner. So she knew how to change the the peg right away. We did how to say or change the CD or change the... The, the situation and she said you are a beautiful continuation of Thai you will bring Thai into the future and she kept going and, and, and to water my flower and I, I my tears just couldn't stop and when she finally <laughs> stopped watering my flower I just jumped in and I said Suko and we are so grateful for you because you are also Thai Without you, I don't think Tai would have been able to to accomplish as much as he has. You are also our teacher. You are also our light to go. So please uh, take care of yourself and let us embrace Tai together. And I was so happy I was able to say that. <laughs> you know, and uh, and after we, we cried a, a little bit more and then Sigo was like, okay, we should hang up. And like, yeah, I think we should hang up. <laughs> 
and 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 then we we all we all went to take a rest and that morning of the 23rd huh? that day was a real day of just um embracing together and my tears were was just was just uh, a waterfall that day i was drinking tea uh, i was crying I, i looked at the trees i cried uh I think your tea went straight into your tea. Yeah. It was a direct flow. <laughs> so the joke, the joke, the joke was, uh, "Fapu, how many clouds did you cry today?" And I said about <laughs> two clouds today. Um, yeah. So you know, like, yeah, like we 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 have to embrace it, you know. And uh, and the, the coming days was much more beautiful in bringing Thai's life into the present moment. And one of um, one of the greatest joy that we could continue to do is have a novice ordination so we had this novice ordination that was scheduled already for the 21st of january oh not this, i'm sorry not the not the 21st the 25th of january excuse me I, i i had a little fear because i i didn't know if it would be appropriate to have a novice ordination um during during this this um memorial service and so i reached out to a lot of um, brothers and sisters senior brothers and sisters and i i asked them is is it appropriate and they said it would be beautiful because this is the continuation of thai and for the world to also witness together that we even though thai is now a cloud and thai is um being embraced by mother earth but thai's life is not in that form it is still in the stream of life of the spiritual dimension and that day i i really felt it changed also the energy of the community um it's still very s- solemn moments but there was more there was a lot of life and When I was sitting at the bell, once again, that's where, where Tai was sit. I was at the bell. I was next to the bell. Tai Min He was at the bell, but um, I would help lead the chant. And so, I really saw Tai smiling, and Tai was so happy um, for us to 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 continue um, the growth of the community. Because for me, one of Tai's masterpiece is the sangha. Um, is creating a community where brothers, sisters, friends from around the world who have the aspiration to practice mindfulness can come and be supported. And Tai shared this on many Dharma talks, and I think he shared to you, Joe, yeah. also in interviews. Like when he was young, his only hope is to have a community where we all can aspire to have the path of mindfulness, peace, and compassion, and the sangha. Is that path? And whenever someone leaves Plum Village, um, they ask Tai, "What what does Tai want them to do?" Tai always says, "Help Tai build sanghas everywhere. Help Tai build a refuge, a spiritual refuge everywhere. Because we all need a spiritual dimension. We all need a place that we can come home to, to touch. I have arrived. I am home in the present moment." And brother, for those people who are listening, um, what can you say about what it is to for them to continue Thai? Because I mean, what you've described so beautifully is Thai's passing is such a down to earth, real example of the fact that while someone's body may pass, that 
because the 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 fifth remembrance which he didn't say about Mm -hmm. apart from getting old and sick and dying letting go of everything is that all we can rely on are our actions and thoughts Mm -hmm. so you know what i see so clearly is ty's continuation is Mm -hmm. his actions Mm -hmm. and his teachings and um and that they are as robust as if he were here. Mm. That there's no, there's no dilution of them. He's been he's taught it so beautifully and in such a practical and simple way that people can immediately relate to mm. and practice. As he said, you don't need to be in the practice ten years. You can start right now. Mm. So if someone's listening to this, um, whether they know Thai or don't know Thai. What is that? What well, what few steps could they take that would actually represent Thai's continuation? The first step that we can do every day is allow ourselves to practice mindful breathing and to really be in touch with our breath and not be caught in the future or carried away by the past. And that mindful breath is the transmission that Thai offered us and the Buddha offered Thai. If we can be in touch with that, we are in touch with Thai. That's number one. He always tells us that. The second is our steps. Thai has uh, many famous calligraphies and one of it is peace is every step. Peace is not outside of us. Peace is every action that we take. It's not about waiting for peace to arrive, but you can be in touch with peace in the here and now. So if we can take at least 10 steps of mindfulness, really know that this is a step that I am taking on Mother Earth, breathing in, this is my left foot, placing its seal of peace on Earth. Breathing out, this is my right foot, placing a seal of love on earth. And these steps, it embodies Thay's Dharma. It embodies Thay's part of his legacy. Because what we were so lucky with is that Thay is a spiritual teacher, a Zen master, a peace activist, a poet, a scholar, and also a visionary, right? So each of every one of us can uh, can honor something that he has given to us and make that our spiritual home. And I feel that we can continue Thai because that will lead to the next. Um, we always have to take the first breath first, the first step first, or the first cup of tea. And if we can connect to Thai, In that moment, he is never lost. And um, to go a little bit deeper is um, we have to practice right view, developing our mind to transform the suffering in our mind, transform the non, transform the discrimination, cultivate loving kindness, compassion, joy and inclusiveness. These four elements of love is what I always felt when I was around Thai. And for me, I always measure myself, am I kinder this year or am I more bitter? And if I want to become a better practitioner, I always review myself. Do I still have love in my heart? Is my kindness bigger or, sh- or smaller? Is my, because nothing is static. Because nothing it's is static. It's either going one way or the other. Exactly. And we are always growing and we're always changing. And if we don't feed our spiritual life, our dimension of love, happiness, joy, it will we will lose it. So what what Tai has taught us is that everything needs food. So even though a picture of Tai is not Tai. That is where the ultimate dimension comes in, where Thay teaches us, don't find Thai in the picture. Don't find Thai in the stupa. Even if you arrive at Plum Village 
and you don't practice, you haven't been in touch with Thai. And this is very deep Buddhism, and this is very deep teachings of Thai. So simple, so easy to understand, but to realize it, you really need training. You really have to invest yourself because Thai can't do that for you. A lot of us, we think, oh, if we are, if we learn from Thai, then yay, that's it. No, what Thai has offered us is Thai's legacy, but we have to receive it and we have to put it into action. And in the last few days, um, I've been, <laughs> I've been just listening to Thai's Dharma talk. From from snippets to snippets, um, and it really just tells me I'm like, wow, there's still so much of Thai's teaching that is going to be so relevant <laughs> for years to come. Yeah, and brother, what's um, but, and I'd like to in a minute get on to the sort of final ceremony. Yeah, but but before I do, you know, every it's just in the middle of the. Um, New Year, Lunar New Year, mm. and a lot of the monastics sort of choose this time to have an aspiration for the year. Yeah. So I know it's still very early days since Thai passed, but in your ref- in the time you have had to reflect, mm-hmm. um, what is your aspiration? How do you see your path? Because for me, you are um, we're all continuations of Thai, so it's not too put a sort of a discrimination there. And at the same time, you are the abbot of Upper Hamlet. You have been Thai's attendant for 15, 16, 17 years. You, he has, in a sense, invested very directly. You know, there's a, mm. there's, there's a sort of very beautiful relationship that's still blossoming in you. His teachings mm. are blossoming in you in a very clear and direct way. So I was just wondering what... Um, What's in in your heart at the moment about how you want to fully embrace Thai in mm. your life now and mm. in the life of this community and in your ability to share the Dharma? Mm. In two thousand sixteen, um, I, I was. I was already attending Thai from 2014 to 16. Like this is when the stroke happened. So I was with him day in, day out, sometimes 24 hours. But there came a moment when I was attending Thai, close to 2016. I just felt like it was time for me to return back to Upper Hamlet, to to be the abbot that Thai entrusted himself to me, um, to help the community grow and thrive beyond Thai. And I, I, there was a moment I just felt like Thai doesn't want me to just be next to him all the time. Mm. Uh, some brothers and sisters asked me, why shouldn't you be with him? Because you're, he's so comfortable with you and he's so accustomed to you and and when you're suffering like that you need to feel supported like that and i just there was something deep inside of me that said yes but tai also has entrusted a lot in me in order to 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 be an abbot to be a dharma teacher to to be with plum village and to allow the sangha to grow with 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 the non Thai physical element in the sangha, and so that day, you know, when I when I um, I went and asked permission to Thai, and I shared with Thai that I would like to return back to Upper Hamlet to be with the sangha and to uh, lead the continue to lead the sangha and the community in the retreats that we offer, and to be Thai's continuation. And and why was because Thai was was healing and our psych our schedule with Thai was very different than the the main body of Plum Village, so that's why 
all of us who were taking care of Tai, we had a different schedule. We kept our sitting and our in the morning and afternoon, but we couldn't go to the classes. We couldn't join the retreats because our care for Tai was our priority. And in a way, that's what the Sangha entrusted this group of attendants to do. And now, you know, um, there's nothing, nothing different, but this moment now feels like mm, that I have to really hold the torch with my two hands. I, I think the, the vision that before was like, Ty's holding the main, I'm just holding at the bottom and I'm still taking refuge in Ty. But now my hand is Ty's hand. My my steps are Thai step. My sharing is Thai sharing. And that feels more real now. It, it's not just on the intellectual and teaching, you know, level. It's like, oh, your breath is Thai, da, da, da. No, this is now. You are Thai. Like, you have to continue him. It's, it's really hard to, to put into words, but... Um, that's where my vow is coming. And in one of my, the closing words that I've shared um, to end the ceremony was like, Tai, you have transmitted us the torch. And now we, as a Sangha, will carry that torch forward. And in a way, that's my aspiration. Um, and how that is, we know how. Tai has been an amazing leader and an amazing teacher. He's taught us how to lead ceremonies, how to lead retreats, how to lead Dharma talks, how to facilitate meetings, how to put a pulse on the energy of the community, how to look at difficulty. Thais taught all of us that, but now it is the moment of making sure that we continue to, to transmit that teaching so it doesn't get lost. And we have to also re recite those teachings again and again and again. Mindful breathing. I have arrived, I'm home. The four um, nutriments, the four elements of love, the four noble truth. Because that's what Tai did. Tai would remind us in his time talk, did you breathe yet? Are you in the present moment? And now Tai is not going to do that. So we have to, number one, do it for us. Number two, do it for our community. Number three is continue to offer that because we also are not allowed to be selfish. And we have to give. We have to be the transmission teachers now um, as a body though. And this this story kind of is, is what I am trying to carry in myself is um, in 2011 we had a moment we were in Nottingham uh, you're probably there Joe I was there <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were in the a room where Tai rests before he leads to walking meditation after the Dhamma talk and next year was 30 years of Plum Village and I, I went up to Tai and I said Tai how about next year it's 30 years of Plum Village we're gonna celebrate. Thai, don't travel. Don't go on tours. Why don't you just stay in Plum Village? We will organize all the retreats in Plum Village for the world to come to be with Plum Village. And my way was just getting Thai to rest. And I think it was tempting because Thai did think about it. He had a moment of pause and thinking about it. But then Joe, he looked at me and he said, you know, when a doctor has medicine and he sees that there is illness around, his responsibility is to offer the ones who are suffering medicine so that they can get better. Wow. And he looked at me and he said, and you know what? Thai has medicine. And I just, I, I understood right away. I joined my palms and I said, Thank you, Tai. We will support you. And 
somehow that spirit needs to live on in Plum Village. That spirit needs to live on in all of us. That is the deep level of aspiration. And then on like one of the personal um, aspiration is Tai is so cool in every situation. My goodness, he is always so solid and so peaceful. I want to be like that, Joe. I want to be able to be in the midst of the storm and still have my two feet on the ground. Tai has given us the tools and I, I need to cultivate that deeper and deeper because with that, then brotherhood, sisterhood, community will have stability. And Tai said, if in Tai's community, there is still brotherhood and sisterhood, then anything is possible. Anything is possible. Beautiful, beautiful. We're here to support you, Brother Papu. Yes, I, I, and I, I share this for many of my brothers and sisters too. I know a lot of us are having this aspiration. Yeah. And brother, um, so just coming to the final... The final day. Final day, because um, I was traveling and this was the earliest I could get back. I drove 13 hours to get back to um, Plum Village in time for the cremation ceremony. And, and I want to thank you personally, brother, because until that point... I had mourned Thai, but I had not been able to release my own tears. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, after the ceremony, I saw you stand up and you moved to open a window. And I just knew that um, I felt I was about to crack open. I thought, I need someone who can support me. In that moment, I came over and we had a hug and I, I just sort of um, was able to we were both able to, I, you had already been doing it for, I, I took the last tears out of you, I think, brother. So um, thank you for the depth of your camaraderie at that moment. Mm. But but the cremation was an extraordinary global event. I mean, just to see Tai, who was such a small, humble figure, you know, who, who, who lived so simply, who had just a few robes, who, you know, as we're sitting in his hut, I can see in the other room, his old jacket that he wore, you know, just this tiny little modest hut for this great master. And then to see this extraordinary ceremony with, what, 50 pallbearers in all their red and gold, yeah. mm. red and yellow, and then just, I mean, tell us a little bit about your how you felt about that. And, and then maybe also, you know, what happens to Tai's ashes? Because mm. um, there's a lot of questions, <laughs> a lot of curiosity. <laughs> yes. Um, wow. What an event. Um, l l let's just start off with um, myself, Sister True Dedication, Brother Fap Lin, and um, Brother Min He, who is our senior brother, and he come from the traditional temple. He ordained in a traditional temple. So he has a lot of understanding of um, the traditional ceremonies. And wow, he was a great support because he went through the program with us and he explained the meaning of the incense, the meaning of, you know, carrying an image, the meaning of why the possession is like this and why the ceremony is like this. And and we shared through the, um, through the, um, through the commentary. Yeah. The, the commentary in, in, in the ceremony. And first of all, it was an education for me. And I was, I got to see a very rich and beautiful, um, Hui culture, Buddhism in the central of Vietnam. So we, we knew it would be a, a big event. But boy, was it a global event. Um, so the ceremony begins at 6 a.m. in Vietnam. That's 12 a.m. in France. And we all assembled in the Stillwater Meditation Hall in the Upper Hamlet. And we were all sitting in our Sangadi 
breathing and um, facing the altar and and gonna witness this with the global community. First of all, just knowing that this is gonna be the last time we can see Thai's casket, even though we don't see him, but just the just the notion of like that casket and Thai's body will become emptiness. It brought shiver to me. Um, in the ceremony, we can see the brothers and sisters of Plum Village all in brown robes and the yellow sangadi, and walking as one family in stillness, in meditation. And that already was very unique because Thai is a Zen master, but Thai is also a teacher that embraced so many different traditions. Like um, chanting was also is a part of Plum Village's training. Ceremony is also a part of it. But Thai has, you can say simplify, but he has kept the most essential aspect in ceremonies when it unites all of us. It directs our hearts. It directs our mind. It di directs our aspiration, which is in the chanting of the venerables when they offer the incense, when we do the chanting of the Heart Sutra, when we recite the Buddha's and Bodhisattva's name. And then when we will accompany Thay on his journey to freedom. So on um, that one of the cars that drove Thay's... Um, uh, casket, it says, Lindy Tom Yam, coming and going in freedom. Because that is the spirit of, of Zen, is to be free. We want to be free. And so it was more for us to have this moment to accompany Thai and then for us to embrace freedom in us than Thai. And normally in a traditional ceremonies, there would be more music. Um, there would be these classical instruments that would be played. But because Thay is a Zen master and the way of Plum Village is more in silence. So our possession was in full silence. And it was so beautiful because it was so... Of course, you can hear the cameramans and you can hear uh, some organization. But the walk was to to walk with Thai. Thai is walking with us in our steps as we are practicing freedom in our own hearts. And um, uh, I've, I've talked to many, many brothers and sisters and many lay friends in Vietnam who had a chance to be there. And there, there were thousands of people. The images is, are amazing. And um, there was a lot of beautiful moments because in Vietnam, because it, Buddhism is our root culture and our root tradition and it's in the it's in even the child. So, you know, when a great master such as Thai, even if you don't know him, you just respect it. So there are some images that when Thai's casket passes by, you see people touching the earth. And somehow I that really touched my heart, you know, and and because maybe that person has been saved by Thai's teaching, which we have seen so many sharings in our website and on different social media platform of people sharing their appreciation and their aspiration of how Thai changed their life. And some people really said Thai saved their life. Without Thai, maybe they wouldn't be here. So, you know, when there's a child that touched the earth to Thai, and I felt myself in that child when it touched the earth to Thai's casket when it passed by. And what was also very beautiful was just to see um, brothers and sisters that I know get to hold the umbrella, get to hold the incense, get to hold um, the flowers that are accompanying um, the body. And so we arrive at the cremation um, site, which was, it, the site was already there, but it was more, it was even more developed for Thai. And they, you can see the grass is very new. You, like um, the trees were newly planted because a great holy person is going to be cremated here. And so it was done on this appreciation of who this person was. And we, as we were commentating, you know, there was a moment we had a pause and I said, wow, 
the most simplest monk is now having the most grandest funeral and cremation, but it was done with by hearts, and it's not for the for the glamour or anything like that. And I I felt the hearts of millions of people in that moment. Um, and it was so beautiful in the cremation. We had some ceremony aspect, which is chanting, and and just to share, you know, the chanting is another way of directing our grief. It's a, another way of honoring our masters, our teachers, our spiritual ancestors, because in the text you you share about the virtue of 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 these teachers. And then we had very Plum Village moments when. You know, our most senior elder brother Tevel Ang asked um, Sister Chang Kong to sing a song. Um, Sister Den Nim to sing a song, and they would read Thai's poem that that we would chant in Plum Village through the years. Um, and so we had such beautiful, beautiful moments of just togetherness in that ceremony, and I I really felt. Grateful that all the venerables who were also there was supporting us to embrace the ceremony in the Plum Village style, which is more, more um, sharing and more like um, singing sometimes. Less and formal. Less formal. Even though we're in our sangari, but mm. we can smile, we can laugh, we can cry, we can, you know, hold each other's hand when we needed to. Um, Yeah, it was less formal, and it felt very warm in that moment. And then on the Plum Village side, we followed all the way into um, the end, and then they um, would continue to um, have the cremation of Thai's body. And it was done in the traditional Buddhist way, which is through firewood. And the professionals that were there would continue to feed the wood for it to for 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 the casket and Thai's body to to burn. And it goes on for I don't I don't uh, I don't know exactly, but more than 10 hours. And the community in Vietnam had a break, so that's when we ended our live stream. But we kept it for anyone who wanted to watch because in Vietnam they would be practicing just slow walking meditation around that site. So the next morning um, uh, was the ceremony, which wasn't live stream because um, it, was it was too much work. But it was all recorded, which we uploaded later. Well, friends can see, which was also very beautiful because I, you get to see also the same possession, and now bringing Thai's ashes back to the root temple, and Thai's instruction to all of us, his student, is Thai doesn't want us to be caught in in him. So when the ashes um, come back to our monasteries. We are to spread the ashes, so the ashes will nourish the lands of Plum Village, France, America, Germany, Hong Kong, Thailand, Vietnam, Thai Australia. Thai will be everywhere. Thai is everywhere, and so um, we have already agreed that Thai's ashes will be divided for all of our monasteries. Any monastery under the Plum Village branch. Will receive um, Thai's ashes, and each monastery will have a ceremony to to commemorate and to honor, and then to spread the ashes of Thai. And so, in Plum Village, for example, we have three hamlets, so each hamlet will receive um, a portion, and um, that is how we will conclude it. But in Plum Village, when we ended our ceremony. We also just had a moment of um, time, and he asked me to prepare just a little speech, just to thank the the international work uh, sangha and everyone who has been with us for the eight days. Just thank you because we really felt all of your presence, and we wouldn't been able to to keep our stability without everyone's support. And then he asked me to have a conversation with Thai. And that's when I also like got really emotional, and my main message in that part was, in 2013 was uh, my last tour with Thai in Hong Kong, and after lunch we had a moment when Thai and I we were drinking tea, and um, Thai looked at me and Thai said, 
Thai has already renewed Buddhism, but 60%. And the future, that 40%, is in the hands of my students, my descendants, monastic and lay. You all have the responsibility of keeping the Dharma wheel spin. And for us, that means keeping Buddhism renewed, relevant, adaptable, speaking to today's challenges, today's language. And when Thay said that, I, I, was, I was still very young in 2013, but for him to, to share that, I felt just so much trust he had in us. And he already saw him in us. And he was already practicing letting go. And in that last ceremony, that was what I shared. I said, I will never forget that conversation. And that is one of the torches that you offered us. And we make a vow as your students to continue this path, to continue your legacy as our legacy. Because there's also, we don't want to become a victim um, being uh, in Thai shadow. Because that's not what Thai wants. You know, Thai wants us to walk this path of freedom because Thai has opened the path for us already. And I, I will also never forget, you know, Thai said, you all are very lucky because Thai has done a lot of the homework for all of you. Thai said if when he was young and there was less turmoil and less war in, in Thai's environment, he could have gone deeper into meditation. But of course, we, we see the no mud, no lotus, right? Because of the suffering, Thai is who he is. But that's just him encouraging us that you have the Dharma in front of you and in your heart. If you don't practice it, then you are taking for granted what Thai has offered you. And that's why Thai said Thai has done all of the homework through all of the suffering that Thai has went through. Thai found the most beautiful teachings of the Buddha, the 16 awareness of mindful breath for establishment of mindfulness, loving speech, deep listening, beginning anew, renewing relationship, restoring communication, touching the earth, and numerous of Dhamma doors, and he has presented it to all of us. And the human, <laughs> sometimes because it's so simple, we think that it's so basic, and and we think we're we're done, but if you keep practicing it, your understanding of the Dhamma will become deeper and deeper. And we have to make sure that this teaching continues to thrive. If it needs renewal, we need to do it. If if it needs a change in language, we need to offer it. Just and we experienced that with Thai when Thai did a retreat in two thousand and three for um, p- um, policemen and women. You know, we used no Buddhist terms. We did a ceremony, no incense offering. You know, it, it, it's possible and we have to be flexible. We have to hold that spirit. And um, this is what, you know, that last ceremony for me, that's what it also meant is now everything that Thai has offered us is in our hands now. And if we don't do it, then we are not good students of Thai. We are not um, honoring Thai's legacy. Thank you, brother. And and just finally, because I want to give you a chance to go and rest, <laughs> but you touched on it, the the response mm. of people. Um, you know, I've I've always said that Thai is the most famous person no one's ever heard of because yes. because he's had such an influence. Yet his name doesn't trip. You know, people say, "Oh, Dalai Lama." They know exactly who you mean. But but what came across so strongly was thousands and thousands of people taking the time to write in and share their experience of Thai. And and I think just to highlight what you said, there were so many people who said, "I was in the darkest." place in my life. I felt I could not carry on. I saw no path out of my desperation. And Tai was like, you know, you say the torch and the path. I mean, Tai had a torch lit path that allowed people to 
come out of their darkest place and and back into the light and um and it was quite extraordinary. I was just speaking to my younger son, Ellie. He said, and he's a documentary filmmaker. And he was saying, oh, yes, there were, I was looking at my feeds, my social media feeds, and all these people who I respect in the film world, I thought they'd have nothing to do with Ty, but they were appreciating him. And I, I think suddenly I felt Ty in the public in his fullness. He'd mm. always, but, and I thought that was his extraordinary power, was that he wasn't well known but everyone knew him. It was, it was like, it's hard for me to make complete sense of that. Yeah, it's almost like Tai is so sacred that you don't want to show it off because it has such an impact in your life that if you do, it might lose that sacredness. Yeah. I, I think that's what the feeling is. And I the same, like with, I just started to see all of these um, media and then all of these um social media posts from people I had no idea who would be been touched by Thai's teaching were sharing their appreciation. And I, my, my heart was really warm and it was so full of gratitude. Yeah. Brother, thank you for taking the time to share so deeply. Mm. And, um, and, you know, one of the things that is most important in life is through our leadership, we give permission Mm -hmm. for others to follow our path. And, mm -hmm. and this is such a beautiful example of you expressing Thai's continuation for, for you to allow yourself to be vulnerable, to be deep in your feeling, to, to able to express yourself so deeply and beautifully gives permission for mm -hmm. other people to share and to go into their feelings too. So thank you for being here today when you've been through so much and, uh, to share what's happened, but to share the deep practice within all the formalities that there have been. So, brother, in a time-honoured fashion, um, we finish our podcast with um, a short meditation. Um, so if you have enough energy, it would be lovely, um, just after all this emotion, just to settle us and bring us back to the present moment dear friends wherever you may be listening to this podcast just allow yourself to be still if you're walking just to take a pause and can even be standing if you're so tired you can even lay down and let us uh, come back to our breath as i breathe in I know this is my in-breath. As I breathe out, I know this is my out-breath. I recognize my in-breath. I recognize my out-breath. This is in-breath. This is out-breath. As I breathe in, I invite Tai to breathe in with me. As I breathe out, I invite Tai to breathe out with me. Tai, you breathe in with me. Tai, you breathe out with me. I am breathing in, and Tai is breathing in. I am breathing out, and Tai is breathing out. Breathing in, I see Tai not just in his physical form, but Tai is love, is my mindfulness, is the compassion I generate. Breathing out, I carry Tai in the present moment and into the future. In Tai is not in the form. Out Tai is my mindfulness, is my compassion.
Breathing in, I generate gratitude to the teachings, the way of life that Thai has shown me. Breathing out, I embrace that gratitude. In generating gratitude, out. I embrace that gratitude. Breathing in, Thai, you are free. Breathing out, I am also free. In, Thai is free. Out, freedom in myself, in this breath, in this moment. Breathing in, this is a continuation moment. Breathing out, Tai, I see you smiling. In continuation, out, Thai, you are smiling. Breathing in, life is in me and all around me. Breathing out. I am grateful to life in me and all around me. Thank you, Tai. Your legacy will continue in each and every one of us. Thank you, dear listener. And we hope to see you in our next podcast. Yes, and... um... Thank you, dear listeners, for joining us in Thich Nhat Hanh's Sitting Still Hut in Upper Hamlet, France, where the sunset is just starting to go down. And um, if you've enjoyed this episode, you can find many other episodes of The Way Out Is In on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on other platforms that carry podcasts, and on our own Plum Village app. And this podcast was brought to you by the generous donors of the Thich Nhat Hanh Foundation. If you would like to support further episodes of the podcast and the work of the international Plum Village community, please visit www.tnhf.org donate. Thank you, everyone.